Right, we're on to the uh, examples in compound angles. Um, you'll see them on page 310 and 311. Now, a lot of this I'm not sure you'll, you'd use, but getting used to the formula is important, so we'll, we'll go through a couple of them, okay? So if you says, see the first one says express sine 15 in third form. Now if you just type in sine 15 into your calculator and press equals to, it gives you an answer in third form. Um, so I can't see them asking that, but I'm just going to do this question just to show you how the, the formula works. Now, what they've done in the book, they're, they're using this table and they're saying they know these, these angles here expressed in third form. Okay, so they're going to try and relate 15 because it's sine 15 using these angles and what they do there is they do sine 15 can be written as the sine of 60 minus 45 okay that obviously 60 minus 45 and we know the sine of 60 and we know the sine of 45 and we know because we know in costs it's in there so now you've got a, a compound angle and you go to your maths tables and a compound angle it's on page 14, these ones. Uh, sine A minus B. So it's sine A minus B. This is A. This is B. Is equal to the sine of A, which is the sine of 60, times the cos... Sorry, I'll just go in there a bit closer just for, just for this, and I'll zoom back out then. Times the cos of B, which is cos of 45, minus the cos of 60, times the sine of 45. And that's from the table. So when you see a compound angle, something where it's either added or subtracted, you can go to this page, page 14. Again, I'm just getting used to using this formula, I really don't think they'd ask something like this. So now, the sine of 60, again, I'm just abandoning my calculator, going back to page 13. The sine of 60 is root 3 over 2, multiplied by the cos of 45 is 1 over root 2, minus the cos of 60 is... Uh, half and the sine of 45 is 1 over root 2. If we multiply those out, we end up with root 3 over 2 root 2 minus 1 over 2 root 2. And that's simplified, well, it's written as a single fraction because the same denominator is 2 root 2 and it's root 3 minus 1, and I think that's how they write it in the, the answer, yeah. Okay, so that's 15 expressed, and again, I'm not really looking at the question, but I'm just looking at how you identify a compound angle, if it's a sine, and it's an A minus B, or an A plus B, or it's whatever it is, and it's cost, same with cos or tan. Okay, so I'm not gonna do the second one of those, and um, I'm just gonna go on to example two, and I'll just zoom back out just to show you there, I think I missed it. Okay, I'll go on to example two now. Okay, this was example two, and it said tan A is a quarter, tan B is three over five, find the value of A plus B. Okay, the angles A plus B. Now, if I was using my calculator, it says use it, do not use a calculator. I would just do shift um, tan of one quarter, which is 0.25, press equal to it. That's 14 degrees, roughly. I would obviously store that number, 14 degrees, and then do shift tan of uh, three fifths, which is 0.6, close and that is 30.96 degrees plus the 14.03 degrees 45 degrees and that's the answer that they have in the book but they they use it without a calculator again just to get us used to these formulas so tan of a plus b because we're looking for a plus b is equal to again go to page 14 in your maths tables it's that tan a plus tan b all over 1 minus tan A tan B. I'll fill this in. So tan A is equal to um, a quarter plus tan B is equal to 3 fifths in this particular case. Uh, 1 minus a quarter times 3 over 5. Okay, uh, they skip a line in, in the example. They go, so if you add these together, that becomes over 20, the top. This goes in five, so it's five plus um, 12, because 
3 times 4 is 12, that's the top. The bottom becomes 1 minus uh, 3 over 20. And that ends up as 17 over 20 divided by 1 minus 3 over 20 is 17 over 20. So that works out to be 1. So the tan of A plus B is equal to 1. So we're looking for A plus B. So A plus B is equal to the tan minus 1 of 1, which is equal to 45 degrees. Again, I wouldn't have done it that way. I would have used my calculator, obviously. But again, it's just getting you used to using that formula. All right. The next question, the next example is where I would probably see it being asked in, a, in an exam. Okay, so just take that one down as well. Okay, this is more likely we see this. You see, we've got a compound angle there. Um, it's similar to what we did in the last section. We're trying to prove the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So well, instead of sine a plus b, again, I'm going to go to page 14, and it's there. A plus b sine a cos b so it's sine a cos b plus cos a sine b all over cos a cos b okay here's this is where you're looking back at the right hand side and how the hell do I get that to that? Because this doesn't go into both of those. It doesn't go into that evenly, it doesn't go into that evenly. How do I get that? Okay, and this is where you go back. What is tan? What is tan? What do I want to try? Tan is definitely something related to sine and cos because we had it earlier. So if I just keep in mind the tan, tan A, so tan A is equal to sin A over cos A. I'm going to keep that in mind. So how do I make this look like I have a sin on the top and a tan or a cos on the bottom? So what I do is I realize I'm going to divide everything, both top and bottom. And this is what they do in the book. They divide everything by cos A, cos B. And this will be... I'll just put this in a different colour pen. We're going to divide everything by cos A and cos B. And you'll see this in a second why they do that. So if I do the first one, sin A over cos B divided by cos A cos B plus cos A sin B divided by cos A cos B. I've divided the top two things by that. And then on the bottom, I've got cos A cos B all over cos A cos B. You'll see everything cancels out nice, and you'll see why you divide it by cos A cos B. Because you would have looked at this and said, I want a sine A over cos A. So if I divide by the cos A and the cos B, the cos Bs will cancel out. And look, I'm left with sine A over cos A. If I divide this cos A by cos A, that's going to cancel out, and sine B divided by cos B, that's left there. And cos A, cos B divided by that, ends up as 1. So what you're left with is sine A over cos A plus sine B over cos B. I'm just after realizing I, I realized not that I'd gone wrong, but I was looking up at the top and saying it's not going to equal the right hand side. And I've looked back at the question; it should obviously be a plus in there. So I just again, I'm constantly looking back and I'm saying, hold on, this isn't going to look like this. I was looking at the tans, but now there's no plus, but there is. Okay, so I, I haven't made a mistake. Was just I didn't take down the question correctly. Tan A plus tan B. Keeping that in mind, that's in your maths tables, page thirteen, and we've equals the right hand side. Now that's tricky enough. Um, but remember, we're trying to manipulate this left-hand side to look like the right-hand side. So you're definitely able to divide top and bottom. You can do anything you want. You can multiply by anything as long as you do the same to the top as you do to the bottom. So you'll manipulate things to, in order to um, make it look like the right-hand side. All right, so 
is the answer. 